What is the worst starter Pokemon by Wolfie VGC? Starter Pokemon are some of the most beloved and memorable in the entire series. I mean, every game literally starts with you picking one to be your partner. I love his to make sure dream. these Pokemon feel special, they're across the board pretty good. Some are, perhaps, a little <laughs> bit too good. And when they aren't doing yeah. so well, Game Freak tends to give them special treatment with Mega Evolution, Gigantamax forms, and regional forms. But not all starter Pokemon have been treated this way. Some are out here begging for scraps while Charizard stuffs itself silly. And that got me <laughs> thinking, what is the worst starter Pokemon of all time? Before anybody tries to beat me up in an alley for saying that their favorite starter Pokemon sucks, keep in mind that I'm talking strictly about competitive Pokemon Important here. Context. I love a lot of the Pokemon on this list, but that doesn't stop them from being dog water competitively. Okay? Nobody's gonna get mad at me, right? Okay. First on our list, so I love that he clarifies this because there's many different things. So especially if we're talking about VGC competitively, because VGC and smoke on symbols, symbols, ah, singles are going to be two separate formats, right? Certain things that are good in smoke on might not be legal or viable in VGC. VGC is kind of its own beast because of the doubles format, especially depending on the regulation that you're in. Sometimes it's a no uh, special Pokemon allowed, one special Pokemon allowed, two special Pokemon allowed. I think in Gen 4, we have like a four special Pokemon allowed format, something like that. VGC is wild. I love VGC. GC. I just don't have a whole lot of time for it and really just, you know, I haven't really built myself to do things with VGC. But um no, it is important to note, right? Like there's Pokemon that I love, like Starmie, who playing through Leaf Green recently. Ooh, God, Starmie is a monster, right? But the amount of times I've used Starmie and VGC or even just singles, right? I, I haven't used it. Uh for instance, I actually really like Venusaur, right? But I don't use Venusaur a lot on my competitive teams. I like that this is a distinction, and I think it's a valid distinction going into this. Is Sceptile. Ah, I can already hear the comments Aww. yelling at me. Listen, it's uh, not as bad as you think. I'm starting from least bad and moving up. I've okay. selected five starter Pokemon that are really bad, but not quite the worst. And then I'll share the top three worst starter Pokemon of all time. Sure. Sceptile is on here because, well, it just isn't very good. As a pure grass type Pokemon, it has a number of weaknesses and there's a bunch of types that resist it. Sceptile. I mean, so like that's the thing. What do you do with Sceptile, right? Let's take a look at its base stat block, right? You're going to be not, you're not using it for physical attack. Like you can, right? What Leaf Blade is one of its signature moves, but it can't even utilize it. Technically in gen three, it could, but that is because gens one, two, and three, there was not the physical special split that we know today. Gens one, two, and three, types themselves were special so fire water grass they were special types for something like normal flying rock i think ground two right those are physical typings therefore it pulls from that specific, uh, that specific stat so in gen three when you had leaf blade leaf blade being a special attack right being a special type in grass will pull from your special attack i mean it's 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 okay in terms of bulk defense 65 pretty bad special defense 85 pretty decently bulky there i mean it can probably take a hit or two uh hp 70 as well pretty bad in terms of coupling with that Personally, I do like Mega Sceptile a lot better. I think it got uh, Lightning Rod in it too. Lightning Rod's a very good utility ability. Um, I, I just like, especially in Gen 3, Overgrow. I don't remember what the other ability is yet. I'm sure Wolfie will go into that. It's just a very interesting Pokemon to build with. And I think that it gets power crept super easily. Well, the main selling point is its speed. It's faster than most Pokemon. The problem is it doesn't really have a way to make use of this. No. Sceptile has the same attack stat as Quaxwell, Marshtomp, and Thwacky. You know, Oof. middle stage starter Pokemon. To compensate, it also has less special attack than Haunter. Not Gengar, Haunter. And unlike many grass type Pokemon, it doesn't have the supporting move set to really mess with your opponent's strategy. No. It doesn't get Spore or Sleep Powder, either of which would actually make it really threatening. Right. On top of all that, Sceptile is frail. If it gets hit with any super effective move, it'll do a Grovile impression from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and vanish. All starter <laughs> Pokemon of a type have the same ability. Overgrow, Overgrow for grass, Blaze for fire, and Torrent for water. Their hidden abilities, though, can vary, and these can have a, a pretty big impact. In Sceptile's yeah, case, its hidden ability is some kind of sick joke. <laughs> it's Unburden, which doubles its speed stat once Sceptile has consumed whatever item wasn't there a VGC format? I don't know if Wolfie used it, but there was a, it was Gen 7, so Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. And I think people were testing out, was it Tapu Coco Drift Blim? Or was it Tapu Bulu Drift Blim? But they were using like the grassy and electric seeds because they're consumed 
on coming in. So therefore, you know, you have your your leads, right? And then you, you know, uh, your seed will get consumed. And then now you don't have an item. So like, you know, you're like 2x speed and you have bulk because of terrains. Gen 7 was an honestly pretty interesting time. I like the terrain mechanics. It's holding. While for some Pokemon, doubling their speed right is a there, big see? deal. Yeah. Speed was the only stat Sceptile didn't have to worry about. Thanks, Game Freak. <laughs> now, Sceptile has gotten buffed over the years. Most recently, it was given the move Shed Tail that, Ooh. despite being a great move, did nothing to improve Sceptile's viability. Wow. The more meaningful buff was the introduction of Mega Sceptile. Yes. Now a Grass and Dragon type, Mega Sceptile was even faster, got a lot more special attack, and a massive 10 points to its defense. Oof. It's still pretty frail. Don't get me wrong. I think that the rules for Megas, and I don't, I think this breaks once. I can't remember, but it's that they get a hundred points. So then it gets allocated into interesting areas. Like we still have the same special attacks. We, we have the raised defense by uh, 10 points, 110 attack. I mean, sure. Still 70 uh, HP, which makes sense. Um, but having that 145 special attack and that 145 speed, it could zoom like zoom. Uh, I think it got Draco Meteor. Uh, if it got Draco Meteor, you could run that. Something like Dragon Pulse, uh, Giga Drain. You know, it, it has options, but you're using your Mega Slot. You sure you just don't want to run like a Mega Mawile? Do you want to run, you know, maybe a Mega Slowbro, depending on the format? Mega Rayquaza, if you're in a format that allows it, right? Like, I feel the consistent issue, and I love Mega Sceptile. I love it design wise. I love it type wise. I like what it does. But the, to be fair, I'm also biased. Whimsicott is literally my favorite Pokemon, followed honestly by Fluttermane. And they're very speedy. Like, Whimsicott is very speedy. I run standard Whimsicott VGC set. I'm going to taunt you. I'm going to Tailwind, right? Taunt, depending if I have like a, a Tornadus like lead or an opposing Whimsicott lead, right? You know, so I can either Taunt or Tailwind you, but I also run the double offense, so I can run Moonblast and I run Energy Ball. A lot of people run Giga Drain. I actually run Energy Blast, uh, sorry, Energy Ball, because that extra damage can come in tech. It can come in clutch at times, and I don't really see a lot of them use it. Whimsicott is my favorite Pokemon, but it's very speedy and it's very priority focused. So you can see why right by extension something like mega septile would be right up my alley but you are still spending your mega slot to do so mega scissor and other megas exist that could probably do what you're trying to do but better i guess mega scissors kind of slow but you know what i'm saying right you have to dedicate your mega slot to make this work the only increase to its bulk on the plus side it did get the ability lightning rod which yes. actually is a big upgrade it's good mega septile is by far the best septile has ever been which is still uh, let me check. Uh, not very good. Well, you could do some cheeky shenanigans with like Choice Scarf Discharge to make it stronger. Interesting. It was just so frail that using it was a liability. Grass yeah. and Dragon both being weak to Ice meant even weak moves like that Icy Wind were a huge threat. And the addition of two new weaknesses in Dragon and Fairy didn't make things any easier. Since you could only Mega Evolve one Pokemon per battle, it isn't hard to see why Mega Sceptile wasn't worth using. Speaking of not worth using, let's talk about one of the most behated starter Pokemon of all time, Embor. As the third firefighting starter in a row, Embor yeah. received a lot of negativity yeah, when it, it released, uh -huh. and its public image did not improve once players started using it. While Infernape and Blaziken look cool and are fast and strong, capable of using their good offensive typing to overwhelm opponents, Embor is slow and looks, well, goofy. Now, the good <laughs> thing about being slower is that typically, Pokemon that are not so fast tend to be much bulkier to compensate. Mm -hmm. Embor seems to have missed the memo on this one. While it does have a lot of HP, its defense and special defense stats are like seeing a band in concert that isn't very good live. They leave a lot to be desired. Yeah. Embor is strong, and its hidden ability can make it even stronger. Reckless powers up all moves that have recoil, like Flare Blitz and Wild Charge. Right. While the damage boost is nice, more damage means more recoil damage, mm -hmm. making it even harder to keep Embor alive. Basically, if you want to use Embor, you need to use the move Trick Room, which lets slow Pokemon move before fast ones. I mean, it also depends on your team as well. I mean, I generally will use uh, Tailwind on my Whimsicott. So whenever I'm team building, I always look at, okay, what speed tiers am I hitting, right? And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes a Pokemon is just too slow. I was trying to figure, uh, see if I could find the stat block on it because Embor is really interesting when it comes to it. Like, even at what we were running, what was it? Arctivish in Sword and Shield, right? Yeah, I think it was Arctivish. It had like 
the 55 or whatever I think its speed was, or maybe it was 65. But if you double it, suddenly you're at, you know, like, no, it would have had to have been 65 because you're at like 130 with that. But that also means I'm building my team in a very specific way, and I'm very weak if, say, their Tornadus Therian ends up taunting my Whimsicott, therefore unable to fire off my uh, Tailwind, and therefore unable to make my team actually work. So I'm very susceptible to that. I have to win the lead. I have to win that first engagement. But Embor actually isn't even slow enough to really take advantage no. of yeah, Trick so Room. This. It's got this awful speed stat where it's slower than anything even average speed, but faster than the slow Pokemon that tend to thrive in Trick Room like Amoongus. Despite Purple. all of Embor's shortcomings, there is one player who believed in it more than any other. This player used Embor to win their first <laughs> event, a regional back in 2011, and then brought Embor to the World Championships, mm -hmm. finishing sixth. Who was this player? Well, by the way, if Hi. you've made it this far into the video, <laughs> uh, just a little reminder to check and see if you're subscribed. I work really hard on every video I put out, and many videos actually have over 100 hours of work total put into yeah. them across me and my team. So if you want to support the channel or see more of my stuff, I'd really appreciate it. If you, do I remember watching older Wolf Glick in uh, about 2017. I think he was in a college dorm room or something. Like I remember watching older Wolf Glick, and honestly, like he does a really good job. Like it, this is night and day from what I used to watch. And I like Wolf Glick because he has a lot of you know information. He's one of those players I can look at and I go, okay. But what's your thought process? He what is it? Notoriously brings Executor to events, like. I don't know. Dude just seems super chill. I love it. But yes, no, that is uh, one thing, especially doing React content, that I'm very cognizant of. People take so much time to make these videos. It'd be very easy for me to sit there and go, oh, man. Yeah, no, I remember playing with Sceptile when I was a kid, right? And just not commenting, right? That's why I like to add commentary, add insight, add my own experience to this. Which, yeah, if you haven't, wink, wink, in the description down below, you also see a link to this video as well as Wolf Flick's original video as well. Did just or subscribe. Channel, uh, the good thing is that you're definitely not going to regret it uh, as I talk about the next Pokemon on our list for Alligator. Okay, oh, I yeah. do feel like people are going to be mad at me about this one too, but I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you the truth. For Alligator, more like Garbaligator. Yeah. For Alligator is a pure water type Pokemon. Wow, how original. Even though it's not as slow as Embor, I mean, it's still not very fast. Like, you're not hitting that 80, 85 speed tier. Like, you have good attack, you have good defense, your special defense could use a little bit more work, right? But especially in Gen 2, when this launched, right, your water is a special typing, right? It is a special type. So you can't even use its massive attack stat for stab being a mono water type. And then going into, you know, Gen 4+, Plus, where you have the physical special split, where moves themselves can now be physical or special, right? Think like Surf versus something like Liquidation, right? Or uh, what, Aqua Jet's one of the big physical ones. Um, flip turn two, right? We have physical water moves now. We have special water moves. Point. So it, it, it's not an unfortunate stat contribution where it kind of has like this weird, like, it's going to be like, you know, start, woo, we're going up and then we're going to go back down. We're going to kind of level out, right? And sure, I mean, I guess if you wanted to say something positive about it, I mean, you could make it work with, say, like a Choice Scarf or something like that. I think it gets Sheer Force as one of its abilities. I'd have to double check what its abilities are. But like, could your scarf go on literally anything else? Like, what if, I, like, depending on the generation you're in, right? Why not, like, scarf Latios or Latios? Why not scarf a scissor or something like that? It it just depends, right? I For Alligator, I feel, is one of those that is an unfortunate. It gets power crept out a little too hard. And while its bulk is, well, not great, but at least better than the Pokemon we've talked about thus far, it's somehow super weak. It's a gator, but they didn't give it any attack. Why? The issue with Feraligator, and this is going to be true with a lot of Pokemon on our list, is that there's nothing that really makes it unique. No. For example, some of it's you may know toast. that Feraligator gets Dragon Dance, but if you want a water-type Dragon Dance Pokemon, <laughs> yeah. you're better off using Gyarados. <laughs> Gyarados also has Intimidate, depending on the format, because Intimidate now is a little different than Intimidate a couple games ago. Like, Intimidate has been nerfed over the years. Like, Gyarados having Intimidate is honestly kind of tech. If you want to forego setup and instead run an offensive item for Alligator, like, I don't know, Choice Band, sure. you'd probably rather use Azumarill. Yeah. Power, if you want Azumarill. a bulky water type, well, there are a ton of better options like Milotic or Gastrodon. I could go on, but you probably get the point. Suicune? If Suicune's allowed in the format, why not just run Suicune? Bulky water, right? Big face of bulky water. There's really nothing that makes Feraligator better than its peers. I guess no. the one thing worth mentioning is that it does get the ability Sheer Force, which in my there opinion is. is one of the weirdest abilities in the game. Sheer Force says, <laughs> yeah. hey, if this Pokemon uses a move that has some sort of secondary effect that could activate, 
Forget about that secondary effect and take a damage boost instead. The reason I say it's weird is that for whatever reason, it works with Life Orb. Life Orb is an yeah, item that gives all the user's moves a 30% damage increase in exchange for 10% of their max health every time they hit something. Yeah. And for whatever reason, this 10% recoil effect is counted as a secondary effect for sheer force. Meaning That's so weird. Right, no, it's so, it's so weird. It's gotta be how they coded it. And you keep the damage boost from Life Orb without losing any health. While Awful. this is a really great combination for sheer force users generally, it isn't enough to save our strong jawed friend. For yeah. Alligator just isn't fast or strong enough to make use of this powerful interaction. And He's that's so probably the, the reason road. its results page looks like this. This yeah. is actually an identical results page to our next Pokemon, oh, Torterra. No. Torterra is a grass and ground type Pokemon that unfortunately is by far the weakest of its generation. While Infernape is fast and strong and Empoleon has a great ability and cool typing, Torterra got stuck with a quadruple weakness to ice and a great role in Detective Pikachu. Torterra is the first Pokemon on our list to actually have respectable bulk. While it isn't absurd, it's got it's got some bulk to it. It's pretty thick. That speed of 56 ain't nothing to, you know, be proud of. But I mean, it, it, you can start to see like they're kind of specializing a little bit with Pokemon, right? Where for alligators is kind of like, yeah, we have generalized stats. It's pretty even across the board, right? You kind of have a couple, you know, raised bumps here. But like, yeah, it's a thick attacking Pokemon, physical attacking, right? You have 95 HP, a base attack of 109, which is going to pair well with things like Earthquake. It's pretty physically bulky as well, defensive 105. And then the special defensive 85, I get it, you get it, right? I mean, land turtle, land tortoise, right? It's lit on fire, probably not going to be doing so good. But it also can be, you know, has some special attack utility as well if you want to pop like a good drain or something on it. It's really interesting. It is tanky enough that it should be somewhat difficult to get rid of it if you don't have the right moves. Its attack isn't good per se, but it is usable, especially since Torterra gets some high damage moves. Wood hammer, yeah. But that's about where the good news ends. Torterra is super slow, which, like I mentioned earlier, would imply you'd prefer to use it in Trick Room. But it's, it's but because it isn't cost. strong enough, you'd never use it over an actual Trick Room attacker that can, you know, do damage. Right. With its quadruple weakness to ice and weaknesses to fire and flying, though, using it outside of Trick Room isn't much easier. In Scarlet and Violet, Torterra was given Shell Smash, a powerful move that doubles the user's speed, attack, and special attack it's so stats. Good. And there was talk about whether this would finally allow Torterra to. Well, maybe not dominate, but at least do something. I don't think it, it would did. not. Unfortunately, Torterra is so slow that even doubling its speed doesn't allow it to outrun many of the faster threats in the format. Yeah. Not to mention, it is so vulnerable on the turn you use Shell Smash since the move also lowers your defenses. So despite this buff and gaining access to the powerful new move Headlong Rush, Torterra still hasn't been able to do anything. Ironically, there were a few weeks back in 2015 where Grottle, Torterra's pre evolution was a major threat. It was used as an endgame demon, using Leech Seed and Synthesis to keep itself <laughs> alive as it gradually whittled opponents' teams out of yeah. HP. As a pure grass type, it doesn't have that quadruple ice weakness. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really tanky with the Eviolite item, yeah. which it can use because it isn't fully evolved. It didn't like take off or anything, and I don't think it got any like super good results, but it's the only time that I can think of where anything close to Torterra was relevant. Honestly, that's super funny though. That kind of reminds Reminds me of the really funny uh, Corsola, not Cursula, right? But Galarian Corsola, the goat, the spooky ghost one. Reminds me when that was running around with Eviolite. Sometimes e Eviolite breaks some weird things. Like, what is it? Uh, you'll see Dust Noir, but you also see like Dusclops in a format. Like in Sword and Shield, we were seeing Dusclops seeing use with Eviolite. Porygon 2 uses Eviolite on occasion. Like, it's, it's so funny. I kind of love it. I love that Grottle saw this utility too. Yeah, you're removing that 4x ice for a 2x, and yeah, you're taking a stat hit. But it's cute. And I like that about Pokemon is that you just sometimes people just show up and it's like, how do I deal with that? You don't. Wow. I can't actually deal with that. That's unfortunate. I love it. It's so good. Which brings us to our final member before we talk about the three worst starter Pokemon of all time, right, Delphox. Delphox is a fire Delphox, and psychic yeah. type that is one of the most forgettable starter Pokemon yeah, it ever. Is. It's designed to be a fast and strong special attacker, but it isn't fast enough or strong enough to work very well, while also not being bulky enough to do anything else. 
When Delphox released, it was one of only two Pokemon that could use the move Mystical Fire, mm -hmm. a middling power move that lowers the target's special attack stat. And this move was basically the only reason you'd ever want to use Delphox. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Mystical Fire was changed in later games to be usable by way more Pokemon, yeah. including the number one Pokemon <laughs> in the game. Take <laughs> I do love Fluttermane. It's so stupid. Like, I love Fluttermane outside of it being good. It could be garbage, and I still love it. Its design is just peak to me. I absolutely love it. Same Eldritch Horror Vein as Whimsicott. In a way, Delphox is only real special trick. Fire and Psychic are okay typing at least. They work together well offensively, as no type resists both fire and psychic. Right. And defensively, they do all right too, providing seven resistances in exchange for five weaknesses. Unfortunately, Delphox's stats just aren't good enough to bring out the typing's full potential. No. One thing that could have saved Delphox is its hidden ability. With a great ability like Drought or Psychic Surge, it would have actually been usable. Mm -hmm. Instead, Delphox got Magician. And if you don't know what? what Magician does, you aren't alone. Off the top of my head, I could not tell you with 100% certainty. After doing some- I have no idea what this ability does. This is something I'd be looking at like Pokemon DB for. I've never- I think I've come across it once and I'm like, this is okay. What does this do? I need to know. Research, I figured out that the way that Magician works is it allows the user to steal the item of whatever Pokemon it hits. While stealing items sounds good in theory, it only works if the user isn't holding an item. Right, yeah. So like, what a weird ability. Like, okay, I get what they're going for with it. So one, you have to either come in with no item or you have to come in with a consumable. So see my, uh, the, the prior thing about gen seven terrains running like psychic seed, uh, grassy, grassy seed, electric seed, et cetera. Right. So run something like that. Right. And then it consumes your item on impact or, or on coming in into the terrain. Thus, you have no item. Thus, Magician is live when you attack into it, stealing your items. And then maybe you do like a switcheroo with, you know, your own Pokemon to. Get... But you already see how much setup we're going for at this point, how much setup we're having to go through to make Magician live. I think it has some competitive usage. I don't know how much, especially with the stat block that it has. But I could totally see something where Delphox comes in, uses its item hits the hits the opponent takes their choice scarf or whatever and then either you can swap it with something or grass they just don't have an item right like you swap their leftovers or you swap their e or you take their evil light or something like that not that you can use the evil light but you are resource denying your opponent i don't know if it's gonna hold water though like i feel like there's just better options and why, if you could just KO the Pokemon, why would you want to take the item anyways, right? KOing the Pokemon takes the item out of the game anyways when they're knocked out and then they have to go back to the trainer, right? So I think it's neat. I think it would need something to really come along and, you know, allow it to really shine. But I don't think it does enough, at least in current metagames. So if you want to get any value out of Magician, you either need to run no item or an item that can be consumed. Right. If Delphox were bulkier, it could be a decent user of Citrus Berry to recover HP and then steal an item. But unfortunately, giving Delphox a Citrus Berry is like giving a toddler a Ferrari. It won't be able to use it very well. <laughs> yeah. Your only real option is the Focus Sash, which won't even activate every battle. And even if it does, Delphox could get knocked out before it has a chance to move. If Delphox Delphox is a magician, it's like a kid who got baby's first magic kit, and they're so <laughs> bad you can see exactly how they're doing the trick, but you want to encourage them, so you pretend to be amazed anyway. Right. All right, enough talking about mid Pokemon. You didn't come here to learn about what the almost worst starter Pokemon were. You want to know about the bottom of the barrel. The mm. starter Pokemon Game Freak should issue an apology, apology over for messing up so badly. And what better place to start our worst of the worst than with a Pokemon with two forms and no hope? Samurott. Wow. Samurott is a pure water type Pokemon from Unova that just sucks. It basically has everything that was wrong with Fraligator, but it's somehow even worse. Probably the biggest issue with Samurott are its stats. It doesn't do a single thing well. No, it doesn't. Like, I'm looking at that, and I would argue that 
the bulk is pretty bad in comparison to like it's not a bulky water type it's attack is 100 special attack 108 hp 95 it's got the hp but i mean it's not eating special hits at all speed of 70 i mean that's pretty bad i mean i guess in a in a uh well in trick room i don't think it's going to do very well tailwind i just don't think it's it has enough staying power it doesn't have enough firepower behind its attacks to really do anything it isn't strong enough to be a sweeper it isn't bulky enough to be a tank and it isn't fast or slow enough to be useful inside or outside of Trick Room. Right. If you want a Pokemon to be below average at everything, Samurott is a great place to start. But stats aren't the whole story. What about Samurott's ability? Plenty of Pokemon are saved by their ability, right? Well, Samurott's ability is good in a vacuum. It's Shell Armor, which prevents it from getting critical hit. Yeah. The thing is, Shell Armor gets more value the tankier a Pokemon is, mm -hmm. as they'll stick around for longer, meaning more and more potential crits get negated. Makes Unfortunately, sense. as we've already established, Samurott isn't that bulky of a Pokemon. What about its moves? Well, they aren't bad, but they're pretty much exactly what you'd expect. It gets mm -hmm. all the water and ice moves that come standard with your water type in the mail. It doesn't have really any meaningful coverage moves outside of like, Grass Knot? That's that's actually kind of it. It is worth <laughs> noting that Samurott actually placed third at the World Championships in 2011. Oh, in fact, cool. I completely forgot about until uh, just now. This is because back in 2011, you could only use Pokemon that were catchable in black and white right, Pokedex. Limited, limited and decks. there were way, way fewer good water types than usual. Unfortunately, after 2011, Samurott was never seen again. But Samurott Aww. got another chance at life when the Pokemon from Legends Arceus were added to Scarlet and Violet as Hisuian Samurott was a new take on the Narwhal. Now a Water and Dark type, its new stats, oh, they're somehow even worse. Ow. It's a little stronger and faster now, but Zoom. still not fast enough to outspeed anything, and they actually made it even frailer. At the very least, Hisuian Samurott's ability is better, now being Sharpness, boosting the power of specific cutting moves by 50%, I kind of like that, though. I kind of like abilities like this. Doesn't uh, Clauncher have an ability like that, that like blast moves are increased by uh, X amount? I don't know if it's 30 or 50 percent, but like I like moves like this and, or abilities like this. And I think they add a lot of personality to a Pokemon as well as adding some utility to it, especially down the line. Right. Where we have things like, you know, focus blast move that's been around since what? Gen three, I think I'd have to double check on that. That doesn't sound correct. But we have Focus Blast, right? And it's like, cool, that gets powered up by, you know, Clauncher's ability. It's super cool. Which is actually a big deal. And Hisuian Samurott gets a signature move called Ceaseless Edge that both does damage and sets up the entry hazard spikes whenever it hits something. While this is a cool move, it still hasn't made it worth it for anybody to actually wow. use Hisuian Samurott, especially with so many better water type Pokemon available. Yeah. I feel like they got so close with Hisuian Samurott with the better typing, ability, and move pool, but by changing the stats to be even worse than they already were, they've doomed it to obscurity. But obscurity would be a kindness compared to the state of our number two worst no. starter Pokemon of all Decidueye. time, Decidueye. Huh. This one especially makes me mad because design-wise, Decidueye rocks. Yeah. An Owl Archer? And it evolves from <laughs> Rowlet, which is one of the best recent gen starters in my opinion. It, it, it's the the, the games uh, the game sphere, Drake and Josh, right? And it's spherical. We had so many memes of Josh holding Rowlet. It is so funny. Oh, let's not talk about Dartrix. Anyway, they did Decidueye so dirty. Just like Samurott, most of the problem is with its stats. Yeah. Actually, both Samurott and Deki Dewey have extremely similar stats. Deki Dewey, no! So part of that speed is because Sun and Moon was kind of a power down for speed. A lot of things in Sun and Moon were very slow. or It just like tear down from where it was. So that I can kind of forgive. But I mean, like... Special attack, special defense at 100. I mean, it's pretty baseline defense. I mean, you're it's going to get, you know, smacked by physical ghost moves, um, stuff like that. Going to just not have a good time. And even then, that HP, the HP being lower just doesn't help it at all. Like, it's mid. Looking at this, it's, it's mid. It's serviceable. It does things, but it's going to get power crept super easily. Their offensive stats are flipped, but identical except for a single point, yeah. and their defenses are in roughly the same range. Decidueye is less bulky on the physical side, but maybe slightly more on the special side, and they both have the exact same speed stat. So, as you can imagine, these stats are a huge problem. Yeah. Grass and Ghost typing is actually pretty good as you resist a bunch of useful types and get two immunities. So you do have some spooky weaknesses. 
Overall, the typing isn't a part of the problem. The same can't be said for its ability. Decidueye gets long reach, which is just a total <laughs> joke. Long reach allows Decidueye's contact moves yeah. to act as if they don't make contact. So if your opponent had status, or I don't excuse me, static uh, poison point, right? If you touch them, you get a status effect. It would avoid that. It would make it like reach, right? That's the whole thing behind that. If you don't know what a contact move is, it's a special subset of moves that basically trigger specific things. Like Rocky Helmet activates when the user is hit by a contact move. Yep. Same with Flame Body or Effect Spore. Basically, a contact move is a move where your Pokemon has to touch the other Pokemon. Like Fire Punch or Thunder Punch or Ice Punch or Mega Punch or Comet Punch or... Actually, you get it. Anyway, yeah. this ability is completely insulting because it's basically like not having an ability. It only does anything when Decidueye 1 uses a contact move and 2 hits something that would be affected by the contact. If yeah. you're lucky, this might come up once every five battles, if that. Yeah. And even then, dodging a Not single a instance lot. of a contact move rarely actually matters. It's part of the reason why the item that does exactly yeah. this yeah. has <laughs> never been used competitively. Decidueye's moves are at least a little better. It gets a signature ghost move called Spirit Shackle, which traps whatever it hits until Decidueye switches out or faints. While this is a really interesting move, Decidueye just doesn't have enough going for it to make good use of it. Even So hear me out, even in this scene, right? Why would you use Decidueye when you could just use something like Rillaboom? When you could just use something like a Sun Team Chlorophyll Venusaur, right? Like, I get, like, Spirit Shackle's good, but, like, why would you not run something, even uh, in Gen 8, why would you not run something like Dragapult? Right, for Ghost Dragon. Let's Dragon Dart smart targeted. It was really cool. I love Dragapult. Um, Gen 8, why would you not run I don't want to say Skull Villain, right? I think that's that's being a little too harsh. Skull Villain has a cool design though. Like you could run Terra Grass type Palafin. <laughs> Oh my god. But I, I you get what I'm saying. I think it just gets a little outpaced and out overpowered really quickly. It, I, it 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 tries to do what it's doing. It has a tier. Like it has a place that, you know, a, a tier in play where it could do things. But really I look at this and go, I just I feel there is more value in other things. A number of other useful damaging and support moves aren't enough to save Decidueye. But just like Samurott, Decidueye was given another shot at life in Legends Arceus with its new Hisuian variant. And this new form was somehow worse than the original. Unlike Ow. Hisuian Samurott, Hisuian Decidueye's stats actually got an upgrade. Mm -hmm. As it becomes slower and loses some special attack, in exchange for some more bulk and a little more power in its attack stat. Okay. But unfortunately, the new grass and fighting typing is a huge downgrade. Aww. With no immunities, a quadruple weakness to flying, a new weakness to fairy, and the inability for either type to hit flying, poison, or bug types for even neutral damage, right. this typing is nothing short of a disaster. And Hisuian Decidueye's signature move is, in my opinion, a downgrade. While Triple Arrows has a good base power, a heightened crit rate, a 50% chance to lower the target's defense, wow. and a 30% chance for the target to flinch. That's a cool this move. move that would be broken on a good Pokemon is somehow yeah. mediocre. The thing <laughs> is, Decidueye is so slow that the flinch chance almost never comes up, and mm -hmm. it isn't able to reliably combo with the defense drop for the same reason. Hisuian Decidueye was given the ability Scrappy, which is actually good. Right. Not only does Scrappy allow its fighting type moves to hit ghost types, it also makes it immune to Intimidate, which is an ability that is uh, a little bit common. Wait a minute. Was that a recent change? Was that eight or nine that they changed that? I don't remember Scrappy giving you immunity to intimidate. It might have done it all along. I don't remember. But despite the better ability and improved stats, the Suian Decidueye still has too much stacked against it to ever hit the target. All I right. See that. Now, all that's left is to talk about the worst starter Pokemon of all time. If you skipped ahead in this video to take a cheeky peek at the number one slot, go back to the start, watch the whole video, do not pass go, do not collect $200, <laughs> and you legally have to subscribe. That's the rules. That's the Are one. they gone? Okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say what the worst starter Pokemon of all time is. Unfortunately... What are... Uh... Chesnaught, if I had to guess. I'm gonna go with Chesnaught. Let's see if I'm right. Finally, it's one of my all-time favorite Damn. starter Pokemon, Meganium. Meganium. Yeah. Ugh. 
I love this thing because I love Chikorita as a kid, but holy cow, it is so bad. It's like they designed a Pokemon with the express purpose of punishing anyone who uses it. There is one good thing I can say about Majanium, and that is that it is decently bulky. It's not like anything to write home about, but if it isn't being hit with crazy strong moves, it'll probably take two or three hits, which is better than almost anything else on this list. Right. And that's about where the good news ends. Meganium has super low offensive stats, making it nearly impossible for it to do damage. It's really unfortunate because I love its design, and I think it would really benefit from some sort of mega or some regional variant. Like, I look at this, and it's like, I think in, uh, it's got, you know, 100 defenses, 80 speed, you know, not bad. It's not good, though. Um, is it, you know, mono grass? It's going to have the immunities that come with that. Well, not immunities, excuse me. Uh, it's going to have the type synergies that come with that and like i know what is it i think screens is the big one you do with meganium light screen reflect but like at that point especially if you're playing like vgc why not run like venusaur right at least venusaur can you know work with like sun teams uh could probably counter kyogre if you do it right like, i don't really see meganium having that utility or that stopping power in a game like that and it's not very fast as a pure grass type it pretty much only gets access to grass type moves but it doesn't get the broken grass attacks no spore no rage powder no. not even a sleep powder no, no, meganium's no. best moves are like synthesis leech seed <laughs> its ability is tied to the strong sunlight weather condition but it's not a good ability like chlorophyll or solar power. Nope, Meganium gets Leaf Guard. Do y'all even know what Leaf Guard does? It stops status. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna try to uh, stop status condition if the sun is out. That, that's so situational though. It doesn't provide the value that chlorophyll does. Conditions only if the sunlight is strong. No status conditions. What a miracle. In the 13 years I've been playing competitive Pokemon, not only have I never played against or seen Meganium, I've never even heard of anyone considering it. There are just yeah. so many grass types that each do unique things. Amoongus puts Pokemon to sleep and redirects. Yeah, Venusaur is a chlorophyll sleep powder sweeper. Jumpluff is a support for sun teams. Rillaboom sets grassy terrain, tanks damage, and does damage back. Wo Chen, Ogre Pond supports his team and does huge damage. <laughs> Was that a live Wo Chen reaction meme? Hold up. And does damage back. Wo Chen. <laughs> <laughs> Live Wochen reaction, let's go. Ogre Pond supports his team and does huge damage, and then you have Meganium, oh, where the best thing we can say about it is uh, maybe it'll sit in the field for a few turns. Yeah. And despite it'll being around doodle. longer than any other Pokemon on this list, Meganium's been given nothing. No regional form, no mega evolution, nothing. If you told me the developers forgot about Meganium, I'd have no choice but to believe you. Actually, it seems like they're keeping Meganium around just as a punching bag. On April Fool's Day this year, Game Freak announced that Meganium would be the next Terra Raid event. Even Game Freak thinks Meganium is a joke. That's bad. But I guess the nice thing about starter Pokemon is that because they're so iconic, there's always a chance they'll be given some love in the future. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe some of these Pokemon will be given a new form or a new ability or actually, I think it's okay that some starter Pokemon are bad. Maybe they should all be bad, actually. <laughs> what a cool video. If you haven't checked out Wolfie, Wolfflick, honestly, he plays a lot of EGC. I like a lot of what he brings to the table. I like a lot of his points. And honestly, this was a really good video to sit down and react to, to kind of just watch and go through. Goes over some of my team building processes, goes over some of my Pokemon knowledge. And, you know, I hope that uh, this was entertaining. You know, it does take a while for him to put these videos out. You know, I, I want to make sure I'm respecting that. And as always, when I react to somebody new, you know, if they don't want me reacting to their stuff, that is perfectly fine. I thought that WolfClick did do react content. So I kind of just like, oh, probably be fine with it. But. In the event that he's not, you know, I always extend that courtesy. If you have not checked him out and you want to, down in the description down below, you'll see this original video as well as his channel. You'll see the link in the names down in the description. And let me know what you guys think. Do you think that uh, this is a side of Kip you haven't seen before? Because I guess there's people that don't know that I uh, am into Pokemon or that I've played Pokemon. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you in the next one.